In this video, we're going to build an internet connected compass. I'm going to use an ESP32 connected to an I2C three axis magnetometer. Using the Babylon JavaScript library, we're going to build a web page that will upload to the ESP32 over a web server. We'll write that web server code in the Arduino IDE and include web sockets to transmit the data between the sensor and the web page in real time. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCB GoGo. They're currently offering their PCB prototyping service for one to two layer, 100 by 100 millimeter PCBs with a one to two day turnaround for $5. They offer a great deal of options for your PCBs and the resulting quality of their products is great. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB GoGo for your PCB manufacturing needs. For this project, I'm going to use the Lowling development board for the ESP32. I'm also going to use the QMC5883 I2C 3-axis magnetometer. To make the connections between the ESP32 and the sensor, I'll use some Dupont female to female wires. You can find all of these products in my little Amazon shop using the links in the description of the video. The connections are very straightforward. I just need to connect the power and ground pins between the board and the sensor and the sensor's I2C pins to the corresponding ones on the ESP32, which are GPIO 21 and 22 for SDA and SCL respectively. With those connections made, I'll move on to write the ESP32 software. As a starting point, I'm going to reuse the code from our WebSockets turntable project. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. After downloading the repository, I'll search for the project folder and make a copy onto my desktop. I'll rename it to Compass Visualization. As we wrote this file for use with the ESP8266, we'll need to make a few updates to work with the ESP32. I'll start by getting rid of the motor control code that we're not going to use. Next, I'm going to update some of the web server functions that were written for the ESP8266 so that they can work with the ESP32. These functions allow the server to handle upload of the files and serving of the files as requested by web clients. As the functionality is the same as I had before, I'll simply copy paste them from a working example. I encourage you to watch the turntable video to get more details as to the specifics of these functions. The next thing I'll do is update the header files from the ESP8266 specific ones to those that work with the ESP32. I'll fill in my network ID and password. And something that I found necessary is to format the file system the very first time you run this code. For the sake of simplicity, I'll do it every time the code runs. With the web server updated to work with the ESP32, I'll move on to include the functionality to work with the three axis magnetometer. To do this, I'll download the Arduino library by DH10. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I'll then include both the I2C and the library to communicate with the sensor. I'll declare a variable to hold the object that will allow me to call functions to get data from the compass. I'll then initialize the I2C communication and call the initialization methods for the compass as well as set its sampling rate. To make sure that we can communicate with the sensor, I'll simply print out the heading data inside my loop function. I don't want to do that continuously because it might interfere with the web server functionality, so I'll do it every 20 milliseconds. 
I'll do that by using the millis function, which counts the number of milliseconds that have transcurred since the beginning of the program. In case you haven't done it before, remember to install the WebSockets library using the library manager. And as we're only sending data from the ESP32 to the web page, we can get rid of the uneven method of the WebSocket object. Now that we have the code ready for testing, we can connect over USB or ESP32. Remember to install the USB drivers as I've shown you in other videos. With the board connected, we can use the tools menu to select the correct board, in my case is the Lowling ESP32, and the correct port for it. We can then upload the code, open up the serial monitor, and if everything goes well, you should be able to rotate the sensor around and see the heading angle change accordingly. The range should go from 0 to 359 degrees aligned with the true north. The next thing we can test is the ability to upload files to the web server running on the ESP32. To do that, I'll go to my terminal and use the command line utility curl. If that goes well, I should be able to go into my browser, navigate to the IP address of the ESP32 and see the page being loaded. Differently than in the turntable project, I'm going to use the Babylon JavaScript library. As you can see on their website, it allows you to do many things like create artificial worlds, even develop games. And if you want to find out more, I encourage you to go through their very extensive tutorial section. Even though the HTML and the JavaScript code for this project is relatively simple, I'm not gonna write it line by line as this video would be too long and lose a little bit of focus. At a high level, we need one HTML element of type canvas. Then all the functionality on the web page is done by using JavaScript. As we did in the turntable video, I'll call an init function as soon as the body loads to start the WebSocket connection between the web page and the web server running on the ESP32. Every time a message is sent to the WebSocket, the web page expects to receive JSON formatted data that includes a key called heading with a value that corresponds to the angle of the compass. We'll see this in action a little bit later. In the rest of the code, we need to create a canvas, we need to use an engine and additional functionality corresponding to the standard use of the Babylon JavaScript library. I also threw in a couple of additional elements an axis to make the rotations a little bit easier to see. And for aesthetic purposes, I also created a tile ground. As you're about to see, I created this visualization for the data in under 120 lines of code. To see it in action, I'll first copy it over from my desktop to my working directory and use the command line utility curl to send it to the web server running on the ESP32. If that goes well, when I refresh the page, I should be able to see the visualization that I created. The Babylon JavaScript library allows us to interact with this environment. Just to give you a taste on how to use the JavaScript code, let's go ahead and change the diameter of the disk. If I save that file and re-upload it to the web server on the ESP32, as soon as I refresh the page, we can see the disk being smaller. Now that we have the visualization running, we can go back to the Arduino IDE and send the heading data to the WebSocket. I'll comment out the printing to serial and create a JSON formatted string with the key heading and the angle value as read by the sensor. To send the data to the WebSocket, I'll use the broadcast text method of the class. As a reminder, the reason we do this is because the web page expects exactly this data in order to update the rotation angle of the disk that's drawn on screen. With those changes in firmware done, we can go back to the web page, open up the console, and start seeing that heading data being logged by the web client. Moreover, if we start turning the sensor, we'll update the angle of the disk that's drawn on the screen. So there you have it. We've successfully used the Babylon JavaScript library to create a web page that allows us to visualize the data from a compass using WebSockets. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can even use 
the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.